If you have ever tried to add some juice to your game, probably the first thing that came to your mind was screen shake. Screen shake is used quite often when we want to convey explosions and other impactful stuff. In this video, we will learn the concepts of screen shake or any object shake for that matter, and also learn how to implement this in Unity. By the way, even if you're not using Unity, the concepts would still be the same. So just watch the tutorial and write your own code. So the idea of screen shake or object shake is quite simple. Take the game object you want to shake and note its initial position. Then select a point somewhere close and move the object there. Repeat this process again and again for the given duration of time. And when the time is over, just move the object back to its initial position. What you end up with is this jittery shaky effect. If you use this effect on camera in your game, you get the camera shake. If you put it on some object, you get the object shake. You can also add an intensity variable in the equation. Lower intensity produces smaller shakes while higher number creates bigger ones. To implement this in code, we need four things. The initial position, the shake duration, the shake intensity, and some way to select new points. And this last thing is important because the way you choose new points define the style of shake effect that you get. So let's say you choose points only on the x-axis, you will get a horizontal shake. If you only choose points on the y-axis, you get a vertical shake. You get the idea. By varying the time, intensity and point selection approach, you can achieve so many different shake effects. And finally, to run the shake effect, we can call a public method whenever we want to have a shake effect. Next, let's implement this in Unity using c -sharp. In Unity, create a new mono behavior script. Let's call it Shaker. Now we need to keep track of the initial position and the transform of this game object, so create new variables for these. When the script loads, we should initialize these variables. Now you might notice that I used local position instead of position. This is because I only want to mess the local position of the object and not the global one. You can change it to position if you like. There should be a way for other scripts to call the shake effect, so let's create a public method called shake that takes in the duration to shake. At this point, we should also have some way to track the pending shake duration. So let's create a variable called um, pending shake duration. In the public method, let's add the given duration to this variable. Once that is done, we can do a check in the update method to see if the pending duration is not zero. If it is not zero, then we should do something. We should start some shake routine. But we also don't want to start shake on every single frame, so we should have some kind of boolean to indicate that we have already started the shake routine. Now we can start a coroutine when this condition is met. Let's, let's call it do shake and define it below. Now the moment the shake routine starts, we would want to set the is shaking boolean to true and set it back to false when this routine finishes. As mentioned earlier, we also want to set the object's position back to the start position and reset the pending shake duration to zero when the routine finishes. Now we can go on to implement the actual shake effect. We can keep a track of start time when this routine starts and loop this effect until we finish the duration. By the way, the reason why we are using the real time since startup is because we want to be independent of the frame rate. Inside the loop, we can create a random point using random range method and then we can set the target position to this new random point and also don't forget to do an yield return since we are inside an i enumerator. That is it, the core system is complete, we can now test it, but to test it we need some other script that can call it. So let's just create a test mono script called shake tester that calls our shake method whenever we press space key. To be fancy, we can add a float variable for duration to change the test shake time as we like. Okay, time to test this thing. Let's add the shaker script to the camera and also add this tester script thingy to an empty game object. Also, don't forget to drop the camera object in the shaker variable of the tester. Also, we should have something on the screen to actually see the shake effect. So I've added a simple ambulance sprite on three game objects and I've just dropped them in the scene. Now when you hit play and press space key in your game, the camera will shake. You might notice that the shake is too strong and we don't have any way to modify it in the inspector. So let's get back to the code and improve that. What we can do here is add a public float variable called intensity. And in our core routine, we can multiply the random point with this intensity. Now we can easily change the intensity of shake from the inspector. 
If you really want to be fancy, you can add the script on any game object you like and just call the shake on that game object. That will cause that object to shake instead of the entire camera shake. Here's a demo of this script in action in an actual game. I attach this script to the camera and whenever an enemy dies, I just call the script which creates the shake effect. Please note that this is just the basic effect. You can add many improvements over this. So let's say instead of using a random point in a circle, you can select points using a sign function or an axis point. Or you can have per axis level intensity. Or you can have a smoother shake by reducing the shake effect over time and so on. So just experiment with these things and play around and see what fits your use case. Okay, this is it guys. Comment below if you have any requests or feedback. This channel is all about indie game dev, so subscribe if you would like to see more. Thank you and see you next time.